We often look back at history, our own history, the history of a country, or the history of the world, and we identify a particular event that we think might have caused a change in the trajectory of that history. In 1963, for example, John F. Kennedy was assassinated, and a lot of historians believe that the world going forward would have looked quite different had Kennedy not been assassinated. Kennedy, for instance, might not have involved the United States in the Vietnam War, the way that Lyndon Johnson did. And if that's the case, we could argue that the assassination of John F. Kennedy caused the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Or I could think back to my senior year in college, when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in life. At the time, one of my professors sat me down and explained to me what the life of an academic, of a professor, was really like. And I was so taken by that conversation that I applied to graduate school and eventually became a professor. I have no recollection of ever even having had the thought of becoming a professor prior to that conversation. And so I might look back at my life and say, that conversation caused me to become a professor. Whenever we're engaged in reasoning of this kind, we're engaged in what social scientists call causal inference. We're attempting to infer whether a particular event caused a particular outcome. And the event that we think might be causing the outcome is what we call the treatment. So the treatment is simply the variable that we think affects or causes the outcome that we're concerned about. In our historical example, the treatment was the assassination of John F. Kennedy. We think that assassination might have caused the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. In my personal example, it was the conversation. We think that conversation with the professor might have caused me to become a professor. Now, whenever we argue that a particular treatment has caused a particular outcome, we implicitly have to think about what would have happened in the absence of the treatment. If, in the absence of the assassination of Kennedy, we still have, would have gotten involved in the war in Vietnam, then the assassination didn't cause our involvement in the war in Vietnam. If I hadn't had that conversation, and I still would have become a professor, then the con conversation did not in fact cause me to become a professor. So in arguing causation from a treatment to an outcome, we have to think about what we call the counterfactual. The counterfactual is simply what would have happened without the treatment. What would have happened if there hadn't been an assassination? What would have happened in my life if there hadn't been that conversation with the professor. But the problem is that we never actually get to observe the counterfactual. We only get to observe the world with the treatment. We don't get to observe what the world would have looked like had Kennedy not been assassinated. Or we don't observe what my life would have looked like had I not had that conversation with my professor. That's what we call the fundamental problem of causal inference. In order to argue that a treatment is causing an outcome, we have to argue that we know the counterfactual, that in the absence of the treatment, the outcome would have been different. But we don't actually get to observe the counterfactual. And so that's the fundamental problem we face when we do causal inference.